Today's lesson is on buoyant force. This is going to be one of the hardest lessons probably that we're going to have, um, certainly this chapter and maybe for a while. So listen to it, go through it, take your notes. We're going to revisit it in class numerous times and try to explain it. Um, but it is tough when we get to the end when we start talking about the duck. Um, it is kind of tough, so I'm going to explain it as best as I can and I'll explain it more and more. Okay, so we just talked about density. And we just learned that if an object is less dense than water, it floats. If it floats, there must be a force that's pushing it up. Okay? Otherwise, the force of gravity would take it to the bottom of the ocean. Okay? So there must be a force that is pushing up on an object. So for example, let's say you go swimming, and you're playing with a beach ball, and you drop the beach ball, you don't have to worry because it's going to float. If you grab that beach ball and you shove it under the water and let it go, the beach ball will pop to the surface. Well, why? Because there's a force that pushes it up. That force is called the buoyant force. Okay. The buoyant force is the upward force, okay, always upward, that keeps an object immersed in or floating on a liquid. Okay, so buoyant force, always an upward force, that keeps an object immersed in or floating on a liquid. Okay. Why is it always upward? Well, remember what we talked about with pressure. Okay. The deeper you go okay, in a fluid, the more is above you. So if you have some water, at the bottom of the object, there's more water above pushing down, which is going to make higher pressure. At the top, there's less water pushing down, so lower pressure. You know fluids always go from high to low, okay? So it's always upward, okay? So buoyant force is always upward, okay? There's always more pressure at the bottom than at the top. Um, this example I got from an Amazing Race uh, episode a few years ago. I love that um, TV show. And they had this competition. It was somewhere in Asia probably. Um, where they had to run out um, this really, really, really shallow lake and they had to get a bucket of oysters or something, some really, really heavy bucket of something. And it was like a half mile or something. They had to run out in the shallow water. Then they had to fill it up. Then they had to drag it back to shore and run with it along the beach and you know do whatever. So there was the really, really fit guys and they ran out there really fast. And they filled their bucket and they lifted this bucket up and they were you know carrying it. Um, as they were rushing back, this older couple was, you know, more slowly rushing out, and they filled their bucket. And then instead of lifting it up out of the water, they just held the water down barely above um, the lake bed, so it was mostly underwater, and they ran with it that way. And very quickly, they were able to pass up the two really fit guys that were struggling. Okay, By having the bucket mostly underwater, they were letting that upward buoyant force um, help lift the bucket for them. Okay, so it made it a lot easier. Uh, another example um, would be maybe if you're doing like a chicken fight um, in the pool, where you put your friend on your shoulders, you know, and you have another friend with his somebody on his shoulders, and they're fighting and trying to knock the, you know, one of them off into the water. Okay, you don't just get up out of the water and then lift the person on your shoulders. You'll never be able to do it. They're way too heavy. But if you go down underwater and then grab them, grab your friend, you can lift them up and onto your shoulders because the water is actually doing most of the lifting for you. Okay, Remember that buoyant force is always upward. So let that upward force lift the bucket of oysters or whatever or help lift the person. Um, okay, It's always upward. Okay, How do we determine the amount of buoyant force? We use something called Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle says the buoyant force on an up object is an upward force, okay, we already know that, equal to, okay, equal to the weight of the volume of the fluid the object displaces. Okay. So Archimedes principle says the buoyant force is an upward force equal to the weight of the volume of the fluid the object displaces. Okay, we're going to do this in class. In simple terms, find the volume of the object find the weight of that volume of water. 
That's the buoyant force. Okay. Did I ever find the weight of the object? No. Okay. To find the buoyant force, we don't need the weight of the object. So does the weight of the object affect the buoyant force? No. The buoyant force is strictly based on the volume of fluid, or water, okay, in this case, the volume of fluid that it displaces. Okay. The weight of the object does not affect the buoyant force. Now, if the object is going to float or sink, of course, the weight has to be factored in there. Um, but just for determining the buoyant force, the weight of the object doesn't matter. Um, and I'll, I can talk about this example in class um, about the golden crown, uh, it's the famous story of Eureka. Okay. So again, does the weight of the object affect the buoyant force? No. Okay, only the volume. Okay. But again, the weight of the object is going to determine help determine if it's going to sink or float. So if the object weighs more than the buoyant force, it sinks. If it weighs the same, it's going to float and be suspended. If it weighs less, it's going to float and be buoyed up. So we're going to take this example. I'm just going to make up some numbers here. And I'm going to say because of this much water, the buoyant force is 20 newtons up on the circle of lead. The volume of this circle of aluminum is the same. Okay, so the aluminum volume and the lead volume is the same. That means the buoyant force is the same. So the buoyant force on the aluminum is 20 newtons up. The volume of the cork is the same as the other ones, which means the volume of the cork or the buoyant force on the cork is also 20 newtons up. Okay, the same buoyant force because they have the same volume. Again, no, they're not going to have the same weight, but the weight doesn't matter for the buoyant force. But now, let's talk about if they sink or float, and we can talk about the weight then. And let's say that the lead weighs 40 newtons. Okay. Is 40 more than 20? Yes. So it's going to sink. Okay, it's going to be sunk down here. All right, sink with a net force of 40 minus 20, so it's going to be a net force of 20 newtons down. Okay, that is six. Let's say that the aluminum ball has a weight of 20 newtons. Okay, okay, so 20 newtons down. But it also has a buoyant force of 20 newtons up. Those balance out, so we say the aluminum floats and is suspended. Okay, so it floats and is suspended. The cork, I'm going to say, only has a weight of 10 newtons. Okay, so there's only a 10 newton down force. But a 20 newton buoyant force pushing up. So you subtract them, okay, and the net force is going to be 10 newtons up. So that cork is going to rise, and it's going to end up being, okay, floating on the surface like this. Okay. Some of you can probably already figure this out. We're going to come back to it. But how much? is underwater and how much is above water. Okay. It's going to be half because its weight is half the buoyant force. So 10 newtons weight, 20 newtons buoyant force, it's going to be half above and half below. My drawing wasn't exactly right there. And we're going to come back to this um, in a minute. We're going to talk about some of this next slide first. Okay. So again, we're talking about floating and buoyancy. So if the object's weight is equal to the buoyant force, it will float and be suspended, okay, like the aluminum one that we saw last time. But if the object weighs less than the buoyant force, then it's going to be buoyed up. Okay, it's going to be pushed up in the water. Okay, and here's the key part that's new from the last slide. It's pushed up until its weight is equal to the buoyant force. That may make it partially above water. So the buoyant force pushes the object up until its weight is equal to the buoyant force. Okay, so let me go back to this one. Okay. So this was 20 newtons of buoyant force. Cork weighs, t weighs 10 newtons. So we know it's going to be pushed up with a net force of 10 newtons. So it's pushed up until this much water is the same as the weight of the whole object. Okay? So it's pushed up until that's the same amount. 
So if I get a different color here, okay. So this much water weighs 10 newtons, okay. It's always pushed up until the weight of water displaced, or weight of fluid displaced, is equal to the whole object. Okay, what if, so let me change my scenario, what if this only weighed 5 newtons? Okay. Then 20 minus 5, okay, it's going to have a net upward force of 15. Okay, then it's going to be 15 newtons net force up. Is it going to float lower or higher? Okay. It's going to float higher now because it's a stronger net force up. So if I can draw this right, it should be ah, whatever. Um, should be a quarter there. So this much water here. would weigh the same as the object, 5 newtons. Okay, so that much water there would weigh 5 newtons. Okay, and the buoyant force pushes it up until it displaces the amount of water equal to the whole object. I said and that's kind of the tough part that we're going to go over. Um, we go back to our picture here. We have our iceberg. Okay, about 10% above water, 90% below water. If I weigh, if I could weigh this much water, okay, if I could weigh this much water, would it weigh more than the whole iceberg, less than the whole iceberg, or equal to the whole iceberg? It's going to weigh equal to the whole iceberg. Okay, so the weight of this much water weighs the same as the whole iceberg. Okay, so that much water weighs the same as the whole iceberg. So it's buoyed up. Last example, we're getting to this duck. The duck is kind of the one that's a little bit tough. We're going to start with the rock though, because the rock is easy. Okay, buoyant force on the rock is 50 newtons. Okay, so 50 newtons down, buoyant, or sorry, buoyant force is 50 newtons up. The weight of it is 75 down. So the net force is going to be down 25 newtons. The rock sinks net force 25 newtons down. Okay, easy. It weighs more than the buoyant force. Fish isn't that difficult either. The buoyant force on the fish, 12 newtons up. The fish weighs 12 newtons, so 12 newtons down. 12 newtons down, 12 newtons up. They balance. So the fish can swim, and he's suspended. Okay, so floats and is suspended. Now we look at the dock, and it says the buoyant force is nine newtons. Okay, so up of nine newtons. The dock weighs nine newtons. Okay, so they're balanced. But why isn't he suspended if the fish was? Okay, because remember, the buoyant force pushes him up until the water displaced, so this much water equals the weight of the duck. And put it a different way. Let's take, let's say I grab the duck, I grab him with my hands, and I shove him underwater. So I shove the duck underwater here. Okay. He still weighs 9 newtons, right? But now he's displacing more water. So the buoyant force is going to be greater because he displaces more water. Let's say that the buoyant force is now 27 newtons up. Okay, I let go of the duck, and he is going to pop to the surface. Okay, so that he only displaces an amount of water equal to his weight. Okay. We're going to go over this again in class. This is the hard part. We're going to do some more examples with this in class.